people always go to brokers. You have to have that connection. Brokers are always going to be your uh, lifeline to deals. But when you're new, remember that there's going to be a lot of people who've closed deals before and they're probably going to see a deal before you do. So you want to make sure you can find every avenue to a deal possible. And we actually found this through a property management connection we made. Property manager knew of the deal. It was on market, uh, you know, sometime back, had a crazy price out there that um, they were asking for that just did not align with the actual uh, functionality of the property. Went off market, knew the uh, sellers were still interested in selling, and he actually told us about it. So we went in there, analyzed the property. It was a ton of upside, everything from just expenses to being out of whack, just true mom and pop owner, which was funny because they actually owned a thousand uh, units, but it was mostly predominantly single family homes. So their process for single family homes was very good, but the, pro the process for, they were trying to treat an apartment building like running a single family home mm. and it was creating chaos. So they were having things like turns were taking a, a decade. They were having very poor lease up strategies where they actually had an onsite person who uh, was not really even showing available units. And another kicker, which was simple was, yeah, I mean, there was actually a ton, but the, uh, the person who was the onsite person couldn't take rent checks. And they were having a hard time with collections because these people would have to go down there and mail it or they would have to go and drop it off three miles away at the office because the lady downstairs could not, could not take rent. They were taking uh, cash payments at the office. They were not allowing pets when there's 600 units in that area and every uh, other uh, apartment building was allowing pets. So they were having other, you know, you could walk across the street and pay $250 non-refundable pet fee and uh, $25 a uh, month for pets. But when we walked all the units, eight of the 94 units had pets. So you had, it was just one of those things that, you know, they weren't taking them, they weren't charging for them, but they still had them. They, uh, there's no other laundry rooms in the immediate area. They have two. One was in high disrepair and the other one was down. So it gave another part where you could actually get a lot of income back by just putting them both online and offering it out to the neighborhood. And then they, the one that everybody always wants to focus on, but we'll look at it from well, two points. One was the rents were way under market. You could walk basically across the street and pay $75 more for really the same property. No, no better, no worse. And lastly, the uh, expenses were really out of whack due to just high utility bills that we could get under, under, um, just under control. So we went under there, we went in and offered what we felt was the value of the property, which was basically a million dollars off of, uh, what they were asking. And they came back and just basically put it back at their number of where they wanted it and, uh, said, you know, Nope, this is our offer. And we said, Oh, oh too far apart and just walked away. So that was, uh, the first part of the process and just went off. But, what we did do is we made a list of all the properties we were offering. And about six months later, we looked at our list and saw this property back in the list and said, Hmm, went back and offered $50,000 more. And all of a sudden their uh, 3.2 number had come down $600,000 to 2.6. Wow. And that was the start of our process where we got it down. And over the next um, probably about, four to five weeks of going back and forth on the deal, we were able to come to terms and it got to the end where we actually just showed them our underwriting of why, because if, if you have that big of a discrepancy in, uh, in, I guess, pricing, they, I, from a seller's perspective, they would just think you're lowballing them. And we were trying to get to the bottom line that just based on the way the property was operating, it, well, we just couldn't pay this because if day one, nothing changed, you know, we weren't in, able to really just cash flow on the property based on how the property was actually functioning that day. So we showed them our underwriting and that got us sealed to the deal at 2.3 million, which is about 900,000 off from where we started. 